Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. Happy New Year. We are officially in 2023. I hope everybody had a great New Year's Eve and a great holiday season. Today we are going to be talking about my January perfume tray. If you're new to these videos, I pick out 10 fragrances to focus on for the month. That really helps me to go through my collection, really get a lot of use out of my collection, and determine if I really truly want to keep these fragrances in my collection or not. This year I really want to focus on curating my collection and only keeping fragrances that I love. I don't want to be purchasing fragrances that I just like. I don't want to be keeping fragrances that I just like. I want loves. I want loves in my collection. Today we're going to pick out 10. I'm also going to go over the 10 fragrances that I picked out for December's tray. I'm going to give you an update on those, how I'm feeling about them. And if you are new to my channel, hello and welcome. My name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I hope you will consider subscribing and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, the first fragrance is one I have raved about nonstop since I got it. This is by Narcotica and this is Dulce Diablo. I did wear this one a few times in December and I'm not really ready to put it away, to be honest. I think I will for a little bit. I didn't get to wear it as much as I wanted to in December just because I had so many fragrances that I was testing out in December. But every single time I wore this, I just absolutely love it. If you love gourmand fragrances, you are absolutely going to love this. This is a cacao apple apricot boozy fragrance. So you do have to love boozy notes because there's cognac and rum in the opening. Then I get hit with a big blast of very realistic smelling, not at all synthetic smelling, just delicious apricots. And then I get a lot of cacao, a lot of chocolate, which translates to me as Tootsie Rolls. Now I feel like this is a pretty straight up foodie gourmand. So if you don't wanna smell like food, this might not be for you. But if you are into apricot, cacao, boozy, sweet, delicious, fragrances. This one blows my mind every time I smell it. Also, the performance on this is absolutely outstanding. It will last you all day. It is a really good, beautiful, intoxicating sillage. This is one of my best purchases of 2022, for sure. Top five. I did a video of my top five purchases of 2022. If you missed that, I'll link it in the description box, but this was one of them. So that is by Narcotica Dulce Diablo. I also had Crystal Love for Her on my tray, which this one is such a comforting fragrance for me. This is like my go-to cozy fragrance. I don't know what it is about this perfume, but I just gravitate towards it. This one, ugh, it's this gorgeous vanilla and cacao. I get this chocolatey vanilla swirl, basically. There's fruits in the opening. I don't get that a whole lot, maybe just a little bit in the top. I believe there's like a fruity note in here, but mostly what I get is the dry down. I get the cacao and the vanilla, and I think it is just so good. The performance is outstanding as well. This will last you all day, and just the scent bubble around me, I just get wafts of it throughout my day, and it just makes me feel so comforted and cozy and warm. This is such a great scent for winter. It's just really easy to wear. I mean, if I don't know what I want to wear this one I picked a lot in the month of December all right up next we have by Chanel we have Coco Mademoiselle intense this is one of my favorite perfumes I honestly think this would be a top 10 for life but it's interesting because as you can see the dent isn't huge again I didn't get a chance to wear all of these fragrances as much as I wanted to in December it was just the month of trying fragrances for me I did wear it a couple of times and every time I wear this I absolutely love it I will say it's not the easiest reach for me though. It's not something, I have to be in the mood for this fragrance. As good as this fragrance is, as classic and iconic. I mean, this is the intense version, so it's not as classic and iconic as the OG, but this is my preferred version because there's a lot more vanilla and patchouli in this fragrance, and I really love both of those notes. Like Chanel's patchouli is my favorite, and I just love it. So I love this one, but I do find that I have to be in the mood to wear it, but when I am in the mood to wear it, it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, another fragrance I reached for a lot, a lot this month in December from my tray was by Montal, and this is Chocolate Greedy. This is a fragrance that I find to be super duper comforting. If you wanna smell like powdery cacao, if you wanna smell like you opened up Nesquik, <laughs> or you know, if you opened up a packet of like hot chocolate, 
if you want to smell like that with some dried fruits that's what this is it's very foody it's so comforting it has amazing performance it definitely makes me just want to curl up into a ball on the couch with a chunky sweater or like a really fluffy blanket and just binge watch some TV or watch a good movie or read a good book or something like that it just makes me feel warm and cozy if you like gourmands and if you like chocolate, Chocolate Greedy by Montal. Definitely love this one. Another one by Chanel is Coco Noir. Now I reached for this one a little bit more this month than I did Coco Mademoiselle Intense because this one's pretty new to my collection and I wanted to wear it. I wanted to wear it and like really see how I feel about it because I almost didn't buy this fragrance because I had a sample of it and the sample had really poor performance. I just could not like smell it on me very well. It only lasted a couple of hours and I was just struggling to smell it. Like I could, I could tell that I love the way that it smelled, but I'm like, man, I don't know about the performance. So I kind of did some research and there was some people saying that it doesn't perform very well. Some people said that it did. And I decided to just go for it because every time I went into Sephora, I would spray this and I just wanted it. I just wanted it in my collection. But this month I was actually pleasantly surprised. I mean, this is not like a beast fragrance. This is never going to be a strong perfume. You know, this isn't one of those fragrances that fills up a room, but I was pleasantly surprised that I got pretty decent performance out of this. I got about five hours of wear and the scent bubble was actually pretty okay. You know, it was, there was a scent bubble for sure and I could smell it wafting off of me. Now, my husband doesn't like this fragrance. <laughs> So every time I wore it this month, he was like, Ugh, yeah, you're wearing that one I don't like. So he does not care for this fragrance on me, but I personally love it. It is definitely an acquired taste for sure. It's definitely got your classic Chanel patchouli in here. It's very classy. It's very elegant. There are a lot of notes in here. There are a lot of floral notes in this fragrance. And then of course there's the patchouli and there's cloves in here as well, which I think is something that not everybody loves. But to me, this is like little black dress, classy, elegant, sophisticated. This is just a woman who absolutely knows what she wants and she just doesn't take any crap from anybody. She She's very confident and she is a powerhouse. So that's what I picture when I wear this fragrance and when I'm in that kind of a mood, I definitely like to wear this. Coco Noir, in my opinion, is beautiful and even though my husband doesn't like it, I love it. So that is my Chanel Coco Noir. All right, we all know that I've had Angel Share on my tray for two months. I put it on my November's tray. I wore it for Thanksgiving. I did wear it for Christmas Day and uh, absolutely loved every second of it. I never get tired of this fragrance. You guys know I love it. So I'm not gonna talk about it too much. It's warm, cinnamon, boozy, apple pie with oak notes. And I just think this is an absolutely gorgeous fragrance. I did put a dent in this fragrance because I wore it a few times in both months. Yeah, it's time to put this one away. <laughs> This one's making me nervous. I know that this is a refillable bottle, so I don't have to actually purchase this again. I just have to get the refill, but it's still not cheap. You know, it's still not cheap, but it doesn't matter because you better believe I'd buy a refill. I'd buy another bottle. Like I can't be without this fragrance. It's my favorite. So Angel Share by Killian. I definitely love this one in November and December. All right, up next we have by Kayali. This is Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli 64. I gave this one a really good review. And if you missed that, I'll link it in the description box. I loved this at first sniff, but let me tell you something. This has just completely captured my heart. Uh, wearing this this month or the month of December, I should say, really just truly solidified how much I love this fragrance. I enjoy this fragrance from the very beginning all the way down to the dry down. I think this has really great performance and it is sexy. This is a sexy fragrance and I'm excited because this is a fragrance, one of the fragrances that I've been trying lately that is getting me out of my comfort zone. This is a fragrance that has leather in it and I used to think I hated leather but recently I have been trying some fragrances with leather and I've been really liking them. I'm really excited to share a video. The next video that I put out, I have been testing out some fragrances and I found some absolute loves, like loves, like angel share level loves. Okay, I can't wait to share those with you. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe so you don't miss that video because it's, I'm excited about it. But anyway, back to this fragrance. This is beautiful. Now the leather note in here is toned down. It's not super strong to my nose. It's the kind of leather, you know, it's like a leather note for 
beginners. <laughs> it's a baby leather. <laughs> it's a smooth leather, almost kind of like suede, you know, and there's rum in here, which if you've been watching my channel, I love boozy notes. There's a big, big blast of rum in here. I definitely get patchouli for sure, but it's the kind of patchouli I like. And I'm realizing that patchouli is very subjective. The way people describe this patchouli is like really different all across the board. So to me, this is not an earthy patchouli, but I have heard people say they think this is an earthy patchouli, which kind of surprises me, but you know, not really, because we all have different noses. But to me, like when I think of an earthy, dirty patchouli, I think of like Angel, like Angel EDP. That is like a dirty, earthy patchouli to me. This is like a smooth, clean patchouli to me. This is not a safe blind buy at all. Everybody's different in how they interpret this fragrance, so please test it before you buy it. But personally, I love it and I found it so enjoyable in December. Really fit a lot of things for December. Like this is a great party scent, sexy leather jacket or dressing up. You know, this would have made a really great New Year's Eve scent. So that is by Kayali Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli 64. Okay, up next we have What About Pop by the House of Oud. This went from a, uh, I don't know how I feel about it to an absolute love. It just took me a couple of wears to really truly appreciate this fragrance because to me this smells like a salty caramel popcorn. I really don't get anything else other than that. From I've heard people say that this fragrance is not linear, like it takes them on a journey, but I don't really go through a journey with this fragrance. From the time I spray it to the time, you know, that it's basically in the dry down, I really just get salty caramel popcorn. Actually, it's salty popcorn and then caramel is probably the order. The saltiness is from the ambergris that's in here. There's no actual salt, but there's ambergris, and anytime there's ambergris in a fragrance, it translates to salt on my skin. It's like my skin kind of amplifies salty notes, especially ambergris. And so it's very, very salty. It's very, very sweet. I do get caramel, but this smells like straight up popcorn to me. You have to be somebody who is into realistic food fragrances. If the idea of smelling like salted caramel popcorn does not sound good to you, then this isn't going to be for you. I get really, really good performance out of this. I've heard some people say this doesn't perform well on them, but I do not have that issue. I can smell this all day. I've actually sprayed this on a hoodie, gone to sleep, woke up, could still smell it on my hoodie the next day. I have zero, zero issues with the performance of this fragrance. So I love it. If you want to smell like salty caramel popcorn, then look no further than What About Pop by The House of Oud. I also had from Montal, this is Ristretto Intense Cafe. I wore this one a lot in December. This one was a perfect cold weather fragrance. I really prefer this over the original Intense Cafe because this has a lot of coffee in it and it doesn't smell as synthetic. It doesn't smell as harsh as I interpret the original Intense Cafe to be. This is a lot smoother and I really enjoy the high level of coffee. Like there's a huge dose of coffee in this fragrance. The original Intense Cafe just had like this tiny bit of coffee that I really barely could make out. Mostly it was just like this jammy rose sweet fragrance. The jammy rose is still in here for sure, but the coffee really tones it down. If you love coffee and jammy rose fragrances, this is such a beautiful, long lasting, just a beast of a perfume. This will definitely cut through the cold. If you live somewhere where it's like super cold right now, this is definitely going to take you through your day. You will not have to reapply. People are going to be able to smell you and it is intoxicatingly good. That is Ristretto Intense Cafe by Montal. Up next we have by YSL. This is Lieb. Les Parfums. I didn't really wear this one all that much. As you can see, I did a couple of times, but the couple of times I wore this, I kept thinking to myself, wow, I really like this. I really do. It's beautiful. And I do. I really, really like this flanker. But I kept thinking I slightly prefer the intense version. I think I made up my mind, although when I smell it, sometimes I doubt myself <laughs> because I really think this is gorgeous. But I think I prefer the intense version. Now, to me, they smell different, not a lot different. You know, they're flankers of each other, so they're gonna have the same DNA, right? But they have some differences to them that I think if you're a fan of the Lieb line, 
I think it would be worth having them all in your collection. This one has honey, this one has saffron. To me, this one smells a little bit sweeter and a little more toned down in the vanilla, whereas the intense version is a lot of vanilla. Like, it is vanilla-centric to me. To my nose, I just get so much vanilla, especially in the dry down. This one is more of like a sweeter honey I definitely pick up the honey in here where there's no honey in the intense version. It's absolutely gorgeous, but I'm not sure that I'm gonna buy a full bottle because, you know, when I wore it, I was like, oh, beautiful, but I just kind of wanted the intense version. So I don't know. I'll have to see. I'm gonna continue to wear it. I'm very happy with the travel size for now. I do think it's beautiful. I do think I slightly prefer the intense version and therefore probably won't get a full bottle of this, but I still think it's a really, really good flanker. I do think that the intense version has better performance. There's nothing wrong with the performance of this. Like this one doesn't have bad performance, but compared to the intense version, the intense version is like a beast on me. I have to be careful not to overspray that one because that one just radiates off of me. This one was a good performing perfume. It had like moderate projection, moderate longevity. It's not nearly the beast I find the intense to be. It's a strong like, a strong like, but the intense version is a love. So that is by YSL and that is Libre Le Parfum. All right, you guys, let's get into the perfumes for January. All right, up first, we have a fragrance that I have not worn in quite some time and I have been actually craving it and I miss it. So I'm going to put it on my tray for January. It is by Mansara and it is Velvet Vanilla. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I absolutely love tuberose and this is a very tuberose scent. So it's called Velvet Vanilla, but really this should be called Velvet Tuberose. I love this fragrance. To me, this smells like a very bubblegummy tuberose fragrance with a lot of creamy, almost like cupcake vanilla, sweet cupcakey vanilla in the dry down. There is a bit of Angelica in here, so there's just a touch of this kind of green note, which normally I don't enjoy. But I actually really like it in here because to me it helps to offset all the sweetness that's in this fragrance. Like the tuberose is pretty sweet. It's more on the bubblegummy side. Of course, it's still floral smelling, but it's the bubblegummy side of tuberose. So there's that sweet, sweet vanilla. The angelica is very toned down. It's just kind of in the background and I think it actually makes it a little bit more interesting of a fragrance. This is a very powerful, long-lasting, strong fragrance that I think will do really well in the cold weather, and I just need some tuberose back in my life. So that is by Mansara Velvet Vanilla. All right, you guys, up next we have a fragrance that I've been wearing ever since I got it, so this was kind of on my December tray, but it's definitely going on a January's tray. This is by the House of Guerlain. This is Spiritueuse du Blé Vigny. My husband got this for me for Christmas. This is my favorite vanilla in my collection. It's my favorite vanilla that I've ever tried. I just think there's something really extra special about this vanilla. I get decent performance out of this. Not super loud, but it's definitely a soft scent bubble around me. But to me, this smells like a boozy, delicious, not overly sweet, very grown up and sophisticated vanilla. It's also woody. So it's a boozy, woody vanilla. And somebody left a comment because on Fragrantica, this does not list any kind of boozy notes, but somebody left a comment and said that on the actual Guerlain website, rum is listed. So I knew it. <laughs> I knew there was booze in here. I guess there's actually rum in here, which is makes sense because I smell booziness. So I just love it. I love boozy fragrances. I love boozy vanillas and this is absolutely gorgeous. So this is my favorite vanilla in my collection and I cannot wait to wear this. I have already put a dent in this fragrance, if you can see that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to slow down. I'm gonna wear this in January and then I think I'm gonna put it away for just a little while because I definitely don't wanna burn through this. This was expensive. So that is Spiritueuse Duble Vigny by The House of Guerlain. All right, up next is a fragrance that I just recently got and I immediately realized I made a mistake in the size that I bought. But this is by Zerzhoff and this is Italica. I know that everybody has raved about this fragrance. This has been hyped to the moon and back. But when this was super popular, I didn't think I liked it. I had tried a sample of it. It didn't smell right with my skin chemistry at the time. I thought it smelled kind of like plasticky or burnt, like burnt plastic. I think I got a bad sample because I tried it again and then I fell like head over heels in love. I adore this fragrance. This is so good. Absolutely mouth-wateringly delicious gourmand fragrance. So for some reason the almond that's in here 
definitely translates to this like almost cherry vibe. I get this like cherry, almond, amaretto, boozy feel to this fragrance. I don't know what my deal is <laughs> with boozy fragrances, but apparently I'm a big fan. I don't think there's boozy notes in here, but it just translates to my nose as a bit boozy like amaretto, like an amaretto sour with some cherry, like a cherry in it. Then as it dries down, I definitely start to pick up this lactonic, milky quality. As it dries down on my skin, it turns into this very buttery, delicious almond cookie. I truly, genuinely, all hype aside, all hype aside, I this is one of the most enjoyable fragrances to wear. If you're a gourmand lover, come on, I don't even know how you don't love this. <laughs> Actually, I've heard people say they don't like this, so it's not for everyone. It's definitely not a safe blind buy. I think this is widely interpreted. There are a lot of notes in there that not everybody's a fan of. If you're not into almond, if you don't like cherry, because I really do pick up a cherry vibe, even though I don't think cherry's listed, you've got to like that milky kind of touch to a fragrance, and then you have to be okay with smelling like a almond cookie. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not into that, then you're not going to like this fragrance, but I'm totally into that. So love it. Definitely should have gotten the big size bottle. Once I go through this, it will definitely be a big size bottle for sure. So that is by Zerjoff and this is Italica. All right, the next one going on my tray is one I had bought a few months back. I put it on my tray a few months ago and I told you guys that I was not impressed with the performance. So this is by the House of Guerlain. This is La Petite Robe Noir and this is the intense version. But when I told you guys that I wasn't impressed with the performance, so many of you told me to just wait. You guys said to put it away, give it time to settle, give it time to master it, and then come back to it in a couple of months because a lot of you said you had the same experience. It wasn't a very strong perfume, but after it settled, it became pretty strong. So I'm hoping that's the case because I just adore the way that this smells. To me, this smells like kind of like Coco Mademoiselle, but with a very prominent blueberry and cotton candy note in the opening. So I get this delicious blueberry cotton candy, and then I get this semi Coco Mademoiselle vibe. Just vibe, just a vibe. It's not like the same, you know what I mean? They're definitely different fragrances, but kind of reminds me of that. And I think it's so fun. Like I love the blueberry and the cotton candy in here. And I love this fragrance. I just could not get this to perform on me when I first got it. It was like just a couple of hours. So I'm gonna give it another shot. Hopefully I've given it enough time to settle to see if it has gotten any better. So that is by the House of Guerlain La Petite Robe Noir Intense. If you've been watching any of my videos recently, I don't think you're going to be surprised with this next pick for my tray. Like this hasn't been on my tray already because you better believe I've been wearing this one. Anyway, I, I wore this one. I've been wearing it nonstop since I got it. This is by Parfums de Marly and this is Herod. This is a fragrance that really just kind of opened my eyes to a few things. Uh, I need to stop thinking that I'm not going to like fragrances just because they're marketed towards men or because I think they're going to be more on the masculine side. I think this is a unisex fragrance. I feel super comfortable wearing it. And also, this is the first fragrance that my husband and I both love and both want to wear. I have another one that we have recently discovered that we both fell head over heels in love with. Like, oh my God, I am mind blown by it. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because that's coming up in the next video, but I'm so excited to share it with you guys. But yes, we are starting to like more and more of the same fragrances, which means to me, I think, I think my tastes are shifting a little and I'm getting more and more and more comfortable with unisex fragrances than I ever have been before. And that's really exciting for me, to be honest. I, I feel like, I know we laugh about perfume journey, you know? I know that that is kind of a cringy term, but honestly, it really is. It is a journey. I have really grown, my palette has expanded. I'm having so much fun. I just love all these new fragrances that I've been discovering. I love how my tastes are shifting. I love how I'm. my nose is becoming more and more refined. I just, what a fun experience this has been. But anyway, back to Herod, I fell madly in love with this fragrance. I love this fragrance. This was another top five purchase from 2022. 
and this fragrance blew me away. I cannot be without it. It is right up there with Angel Share for me, and I still love Angel Share the most, but oh, this is a close second. <laughs> this is a close second for me, so I really love this one. So if you love tobacco fragrances, if you love cinnamon, so I get a lot of cinnamon in the opening, and then I get a lot of sweet tobacco. I don't pick up smokiness at all, but my husband does. When he wears it, he gets more of a smoky tobacco on his skin, and I get more of just a sweet tobacco. And then in the dry down, I get a ton of vanilla, like a sweet vanilla on my skin as well. So that is by Parfums de Marley Herod. I cannot wait to keep on wearing this in the month of January. All right, up next is a fragrance that's pretty new to my collection as well, and this is by La Taffa. This is from the Pride Collection, and this is Nebras. This is outstanding. This is an outstanding fragrance. I really love this one. The quality of this is so good. This smells way, way more expensive to me than what it is. Now this is from Latafa, and this is, like I said, the Pride Collection. So the Pride Collection I think is a little bit more pricey than the typical Latafa. I think I paid like around $50 for this, maybe somewhere in there. That I don't know, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was right around $50. And I think this is worth more. It's worth, I would have paid more for this fragrance. Well, if I would have tested it first, I would have paid more for this fragrance, if that makes sense, because this was a blind buy for me. But I think the quality in this is outstanding. This lasts all day. It smells really good. It's a fruity gourmand, basically. So opening, you have red berries, mandarin orange, so it's very fruity and sweet in the opening, and then you've got some cacao, you've got sugar, you've got tonka bean, there's a lot of vanilla in here. It dries down to this like sweet cacao, tonka bean, vanilla deliciousness. If you like fruity gourmands, this is a no-brainer. I really think that this is underrated. I don't hear a whole lot of people talking about it. I have heard a few, few people talking about this fragrance, but I think it is one of the best affordable fragrances I have found in quite some time. Next up we have by Navitas Parfums. This is Chocolate Queen. This is a fragrance that I was surprised by, to be honest. I, I thought I would like it. I don't know. I didn't know what to think because the notes in here are decadent. Like there are some decadent, there's like hazelnut, there's fudge, there's Irish cream, there's caramel, there's every like desserty kind of note, that sticky sweet desserty kind of note that you can think of is like in this fragrance. And I was scared that it was just gonna be sickly sweet, like overpowering sickly sweet. But this has bitter almond and woody notes in this fragrance that I smell, especially the woody notes through the entire journey of this fragrance. Every note that I smell, like if I smell the fudge for instance, it's never overpowering because I'm getting those woody notes along with it. The only thing about this fragrance is the very beginning. Like when I first spray it, I don't love it because I get a huge blast of bitter almond and woody notes. Like that's the first thing I smell. When I first spray it, I'm like, oh, that's not my favorite. But after about two minutes, when this starts to dry down, it turns into a mind-blowingly amazing, delicious, fantastic fragrance that is very non-linear. Like it literally will take you through every single note that's in here. There's a point in the mid of this fragrance where I smell the fudge accord and it smells so delicious and it makes me crave fudge every single time. I really am looking forward to wearing this one a bit more in January. So that is by Navitas Parfums in collaboration with Gabby from Gabby Loves Perfumes. That is Chocolate Queen. And the other one I need to put on the tray is also by Navitas. This is the collaboration with Paulina Shar. This is Venom of Love. This is a fragrance I wore on Christmas Eve and I'm gonna put it on this tray as well for January. Now this one is a little bit more linear to my nose, but it doesn't make it any less beautiful. I still enjoy this one just as much as I do Chocolate Queen. They're just different. This one is a cherry cordial to me. That's what it smells like. It smells like a boozy cherry cordial. I get boozy notes, there's liquor in here, and then I get this delicious, like chocolatey, sweet cherry dessert literally like you're biting into a chocolate covered cherry and then i even get that like creaminess that's on the inside of a cherry cordial i find it incredibly enjoyable i get really good performance out of this and i just love this fragrance so can't wait to wear it more in january that is by Navitas Parfums Venom of Love in collaboration with Paulina Char. All right, I have two decans here that I want to make my way through because I'm trying to decide. Well, one of them I already know I'm getting a full bottle of. The other one I'm not sure. I need to wear it a little bit more. This is by Nishane. This is 100 Silent Ways. I actually wasn't impressed when I first tried this. I got this 
a while ago, like a year ago maybe. And I remember when I first sprayed this and smelled it, I was like, what is all the hype about? I just did not get it. I came back and revisited it last month and I was like, ooh, this is gorgeous. I loved it. Like it was a completely different experience. So I'm not sure what happened, but I think this smells incredible. I wanna wear it though. I still have quite a bit in my decant to go through. So I'm going to go through this decant in January. And if I just absolutely love it, I will purchase a full bottle of 100 Silent Ways. And the other one I already know for a fact I will be getting a full bottle of because I felt head over heels in love with it. This is a decant from Scentbird and this is Cherry Punk from Room 1015. This is a sexy badass fragrance. Like you are a badass if you wear this fragrance. I picture wearing a leather jacket, having on like a smoky eye, and this would have been a great New Year's Eve scent. This is like party... I'm ready to party, you know what I mean? I am ready to party <laughs> type of fragrance. I love the cherry in here. It is a sweet but yet sour, juicy, gourmandish, yummy, edible kind of cherry. And then there's definitely a prominent leather note in here, but again, the leather is done in such a way that it's so smooth. It does not feel harsh, it does not feel cold, it does not feel abrasive to me. Love Cherry Punk, this will be a full bottle for me once I go through this decant, and I can't wait to wear this in the month of January. All right, you guys, and those are the 10 fragrances I picked out for January. Let me know in the comment section what fragrances you have been wearing lately. If you have any recommendations for me, I love to hear from you guys. If you like this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I hope everybody is having an amazing day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.